What's going on guys? Tyler Smith from TopSoundDesign.com here. So today we're going to talk about setting up our mix session. Um, as you can see here, I have a tracking session going here. And this was recorded on a 24 track console. So first of all, to get this set up, we are going to delete these unused tracks. So you can see here 16 and 17 are not being used, so we're going to go ahead and delete those. All right, and we're going to make this click print. I'm going to hide and make that inactive. Okay, so here's all the tracks that actually have audio on them that we're going to use. And to start out, organization is key. And we're going to go ahead and start routing instruments to their own buses. So you can see here all the green I have laid out are the drums. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new one of those. So I'm going to shift command in that. And we're going to pick stereo, hogs input and enter. Okay, we have a new AUGS input here. We're gonna rename it uh, Drum Bus. Okay, and now for input, you can see we don't have any buses laid out yet, so we're gonna just pick the first one, bus one and two. Right click that, rename, right, to Drum Bus. That's gonna be our inputs. And now if we select all these guys, we're gonna click the first one, shift click the shaker, so we got all of them there. And now when we hold the outputs, we're gonna option shift and select our drum bus. Okay, that's gonna set all of our outputs to that drum bus now. And we're gonna keep on going down, rhythm guitars, shift command in, stereo aux input, create. Go ahead and change the color on that to orange, if I can it's that orange right there, okay. And double click and rename. Just rename it Rhythm Bus for this purpose. Okay, now the input, same thing. Bus three and four will work. Right click to rename that. And Rhythm Bus, enter. All right, now we got lead guitars right here. So Shift Command N, gonna pick a stereo and aux input enter go ahead and color that yellow right there and rename it to lead guitar bus go ahead and get rid of that color palette and now for a mono track we're still going to make a bus buses just help compensate everything because once you put a plug then that delays it um and that comp and everything else has to compensate for that so so we're going to rename this to Base bus. And let's go ahead and make it red. That's close enough. And down here, let's do shift command N on this acoustic. If you're wondering what the names of those are, that just refers to mid acoustic guitar, side acoustic guitar left, and side acoustic guitar right. Alright, so we're gonna pick that guy. Double click on that guy. You can just name this acoustic bus. And same thing with our input. I'm gonna have to go back and put an input on that base. Right, rename that to acoustic bus. Right, let's go back here before we forget. And that's gonna be seven and eight. It doesn't really matter of the order unless you want it organized in a certain way. So that's gonna be base bus. Okay. And we're gonna make a lead vocal bus as well. Just because. And lead box bus. Or just box bus, whatever you prefer. Go ahead and make that purple. Uh, let's see which one is that. That's close enough right there. Right, let's go ahead and make that 9 and 10. Rename that to box bus. Let's go ahead and do our outputs for the individual tracks. So we're going to click rhythm guitar and we're going to shift click down to the bottom. Now we're going to option shift on the output. So it's going to be rhythm. Right now we're gonna 
Option Shift to lead. And we're just gonna single click on that guy and that's gonna go to the base bus, like so. And same thing with acoustics. Gonna Option Shift and acoustic stereo okay and one more we got lead vocal going to fox bus okay so our next step is we need those buses to route to somewhere which everything has to have an output so we need all of our buses to go to a central bus which is going to be the submaster so we're going to shift command n Create another stereo aux input. Okay, we'll go ahead and drag that down to the end of the session here. And we'll just call that submaster. And let's do light purple for that. Okay. So we have our submaster here. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna make 13 or 14. And this can be any buses you choose, but we're gonna Make this the submaster bus. And now we go back to our individual buses and we're gonna make the output of this go to the submaster. Right, this is so everything sums up to the submaster, kind of like your master fader. Submaster and And we can go ahead and slap on a master fader. Let's do a stereo master. Oops, okay, let's go ahead and drag that down. And I like to call it just master, not master one, since there's only one of them. Okay, I can see our session is a little hot there. That's because it's tracking. Um, and it was recorded on a Neve analog console. So everything's coming in a little hot in Pro Tools. So, we have both of these routed to our analog one and two, which is fine if you're in the box. I would recommend not putting anything other than analytics on your master fader. Um, this prevents, the master fader ends up being Pro Tools. You can read about that in one of our articles. But if you're putting a mix bus compressor, um, if it's just for drums, you could put it up on this drum track. If you have your level set that you want it on the drums, but you just need to you just want to compress them all together a little bit this would be the place to do that here and then that'll route back to your overall mix in the submaster for reverb and effects we're going to want to make one more aux input so we're going to do stereo aux input all right we're going to go ahead and name that reverb you can do this with delay whatever effect you have Okay, we're gonna head and make that. And depending on if you want this reverb to be only drums, then you're gonna route this to the drum bus and that'll eventually make it to the submaster. Or if you want it in the overall mix, say it's a vocal and it doesn't really matter since you only have one vocal track, you could um, send it straight to the submaster if that's all you're sending it on. So kind of that's just up to you. I usually send it to the submaster on most things, unless you have like a an example could be a like your snare top mic. You might only want a certain plate reverb or something on that, any kind of reverb on that, but not on your vocal. So you can send one and not the other, which is fine. You'll just send that to the drum submaster on one, make a new one, and then send that to whatever else you desire. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and keep that green, I suppose. Now one thing that gets people in trouble with this is you play it back, you solo a track, and then you hear nothing. And this is because it's similar to an analog console. Pro Tools has what's equivalent to um, solo safe on an analog console. And you're gonna wanna command click the solo button on these aux inputs or buses. And that way when you solo a single track it doesn't mute the buses so that way everything's still going through the buses whatever you have soloed 
So we're gonna head so that, solo the submaster, and solo the reverb. All right, now once we solo, let's say, let's do the snare bottom and top. Once we solo save this, now we got it. And that's going through the drum bus, all the way through the submaster and out the analog one and two. And this keeps the session really organized. Like I said, if you have if you have a set level of drums you like, and you want to just overall bring the drums down or up in the mix, you're gonna to want to take this drum bus, move it up and down, and that's gonna affect the submaster, but not individual drum tracks. So you get to keep your level and keep on rolling through the mix. So it's super helpful. I'm gonna have more on plugs and different mixing techniques in future videos, but I just wanted to cover the basic setup for it after a tracking session. So I'll go ahead and see you guys in the next one.